inside this kit. Welcome back to the show. Today, we're following up on the UAP report that was released on June 25th, 2021. By the Office of the Director of National Intelligence to the Senate Intelligence Committee. That's right. And the preliminary assessment was entitled Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. And I looked in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary for the definition of preliminary. And the definition is something that precedes or is introductory or preparatory. So there must be a follow-up report coming at some time then. If there must be. In, yeah. And we'll be anxiously awaiting it. And when it comes out, we'll have another report. Definitely. Definitely just following this up. So I was reading the report and I saw they they used the word threats six times. Yeah. So they must feel that UAPs are a threat to national security, to the military, to the intelligence community. So the new name for the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP, is the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. Right, and uh, Luis Elizondo was part of this, right? Yes, he was. He, he was, was the former director former of Former director. So if you don't know him, look, look him up. So the report says that some of the UAPs are the result of sensor anomalies. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. What I would like to do is see all of the data that they have. Right. And compare it for ourselves so that we can see, you know, make if there's... judgment. Make exactly, yeah. exactly. You can't make a judgment off of one videotape. No. So the executive summary mm -hmm. of the report, they were unable to draw firm conclusions about the nature or intent of UAP due to limited amount of high quality reporting. So most of the UAP reported probably do represent physical objects given that the majority of UAP uh, were registered across the multiple sensors. So across FLIR, photography, photography radar, radar um, yeah. and who knows what else they have. Right. <laughs> And a limited number of those incidents, the UAP reportedly appeared to exhibit unusual flight characteristics. Right. The sudden turns, the sudden speed, exactly. which uh, nobody, I guess, uh, these days can do. And, and so some, of, some of these objects that did speed away at an incredible speed made, they did not break the sound barrier. They did not. And they were mainly uh, almost noiseless. Or very right. quiet. Just, right. Uh, and if there was a person inside of that craft, how were they able to survive, to survive the G forces? The G -force. Which they, some some uh, estimates are sixty Gs. Right. And <laughs> we know that even pilots uh, are going to black out at seven to nine. You black out. You black out. Bla I mean, so they say that some of it could be due to sensor errors. Right. You know, or things like spoofing, basically tricking people into believing something that isn't true. Right. And probably in a lot of cases, you know, it was the observer right. misidentified and what he was seeing, didn't understand what they were seeing. The misperception, yes. Right, you know. but we have to remember again, most of these, uh, probably all of these sightings came from military personnel right. who are trained to recognize what's out there. You know, especially the pilots, they need to know what's out there. They need to know what the adversaries have, well, you have what the capabilities are, their you have weapons. You recognize your enemy, yeah. Exactly. And every, every uh, nation is trying to have air superiority, especially over their uh, nation state. The report... Uh narrows UAP down to what now? To five basic categories based on a range of appearances and behavior that were described in the reporting. We can look at a few pictures describing those five categories, right? Right. So what's the first one? The first one is airborne clutter. Okay. So let's take a look at these photos here. So the next one was natural atmospheric phenomena. 
Okay. Like the aurora borealis. Borealis. Or the clouds uh, changing clouds. shape because of uh, atmospheric pressure, right. uh, winds, uh, hot, cold. And then some of them could be U.S. government black projects, so to speak, or projects being developed for the government by private industry. Right. So it could be a bunch of... Uh, I'm, I'm still thinking the 50-50 of... Uh, government project at least some of them some of them at maybe half or more yeah. yeah yeah for sure so the other thing is they could be foreign adversaries um right. new systems china russia who knows yeah right or, or could North be Korea. somebody else yeah could be anybody. it can be a small country that's, that's been it could uh, be yeah. that's been kind of uh working on something in the, in the shadows and we never Never, uh, kept an eye on it. I mean, you exactly. know, it, it could be Liechtenstein, it could be it, Switzerland, it, it could, could be, be, yeah. And then the last one is, they they use the phrase, catch all other, other. Bin. Other, so. So everything else fits into other. So these would be. The ones they can't identify. They can't identify, but all government military reports, right? These are all military reports, okay, okay, yes. Okay. But they cannot categorize them as the other four so they don't have enough info to exactly either they don't have enough info or it doesn't fit any parameters of anything we scientifically know it doesn't fit the human comprehension exactly yeah, okay. of what is capable in the present technology that exists we have or that we know of that we know of yeah that there hasn't been some scientific breakthrough right. that that is under the radar so to speak yeah but it would be interesting to see what reports are actually in that other bin right 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 i want to know what our viewers think about this if you want to let us a uh, little comment and yeah, see leave a comment down below uh what do you think about all that whole report do you think it's phony do you think they're hiding something do you think uh so i think they do <laughs> yeah, I think so too. So UAP clearly poses a safety of flight issue and may pose challenge to the U.S. national security. Definitely. So the UAP would also represent a national security challenge if a foreign adversary collection platform or provide evidence a potential adversary has developed either a breakthrough or disruptive technology. I think that it's probably a lot of them are ours and some may be some other countries right we may be working with some other countries exactly. on some of these projects that's what i'm thinking but the only way that they can really figure out what's going on here is to consolidate these reports from across the government and that will give them a more sophisticated analysis of the uap yeah i agree and they'll be able to understand it better right some of these steps are resource intensive and would require additional investment. As you said before, okay, they're looking for more money for this project. Right. But I do think this is something that should be studied. Oh, for sure. I really, I, 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 and I think that, that the public has to get involved in this. You know, private industry, everybody, because of the limited data, it leaves most of the UAP unexplained so they don't have enough data to make cons comparisons we don't you know, have the technology to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that may be true we may not be we scientifically not. advanced enough to understand what's actually going on right you know we may not we may be 50 years away uh technologically from even understanding you know what? the yeah. technology that's involved in doing whatever these things do so there was no standard um, reporting system okay. for UAPs until the Navy established one in March of 2019. And then the Air Force adopted the same uh, reporting system on November 2020, but it's only limited to the United States government reporting. It's, right. not, it's not extended to you know, uh, outside agencies or or uh, private industry, for right, example. It, I think they're more worried about their national security than anything. <laughs> right. So the task force 
would regularly hear stories that were not reported okay. officially or unofficially. Right. So there is some of that anecdotal evidence, but it, there's no report. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's it's what a pilot said it's or someone on a ship said, but it was never reported. Logged officially. in. Officially. Yeah, in. it was never logged in. So they do have that anecdotal evidence as well. But like you said, there's nothing physical. Yeah, so it's in you know, the bin. Exactly. So, yeah, it's probably in that other bin. So largely witnessed firsthand by military aviators and that were collected from system we consider to be reliable. Right, so mostly pilots or people on a ship or the sensors from the aircraft or the sensors from a ship. Or, or a military base. So these reports describe incidents that occurred between 2004 and now 2021. Right, right. They're, they did not include anything prior to 2004. Right, you have to get rid of the stigma, you know, that, oh, you're crazy if you talk about right. these things. No, especially, you know, if you're a pilot and there's something up there that's affecting what you're doing or could affect another aircraft, and it's dangerous. Lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that there's an actual danger there and it should be reported and studied to figure out what it is. Exactly. You know, and when they figure it out, they're going to figure out a way to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so shoot it down. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they almost got hit too a few times. Yeah. yeah. There's been a couple of uh, near misses. In that case, we identified the object as a large deflating balloon. Right. And the others remained oh, unidentified. So 144 reports origi originated from the U.S. government. Right. That's a lot. Yeah. And of these, 80 reports involved observation with multiple sensors. Most reports describe UAP as object that interrupted pre-planned training or other military activity. If these are from somewhere else or a foreign right. adversary, foreign adversary might know. Might know because they it's, might pick up. Well, this one's you know yeah. signals intelligence Spy or exactly. They might pick up you know from satellites or whatever. Figure oh something's going on over here, and they're going to study it. But if it's from off world, right? Okay, maybe you know they just know that this particular area has a lot of stuff going on militarily. Like and they just here to study it or whatever. Right. So there's been a lot of challenges um, in collecting UAPs. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, like we said before, you know, um, the stigma of people thinking you're crazy if you see something like this. And that's why yeah, I think that's why uh, the government changed the word UFO to UAP to change the stigma that you know keep right. UFO the right old, because uh, when you hear UFO right you know it's even like flying saucer like right. from flying exactly. saucer to UFO exactly so now we have UFO to UAP right it's 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 like you know when I talk to someone and I say you know UFO and they go oh I don't believe that stuff and I said well it doesn't mean it's from space right you know it doesn't it even mean flying saucer it means unidentified an you know flying, flying object, object. It can be anything. It can but, be a piece like, of paper. It, it's a stigma. Everyone yeah. just thinks UFO crazy. Yeah. So most of these pilots who saw these things were afraid to talk about it, right. you know, amongst their friends in the military or their superiors because of how people would perceive, yeah. perceive them thinking, hey, you know, should we let this guy fly this $15 million aircraft? When he, <laughs> believe, yeah. when he believes in this kind of stuff? The stigma has kind of lessened over the years since um, they developed the term UAP, like you were saying right. before. And I think also because the since the U.S. government has been more open about it, it's been more official mm -hmm. that those phenomena exist. Right. It's been more accepted now. Right. More people are coming out, like, right, you, right, like right. you were saying before. Yeah. But there's still some who still think that this could be a risk you know, oh, to their sure. career. Yes. One of the challenges also was that the sensors that are mounted on these platforms, planes, you know, uh, in on the military base, on an Ships, aircraft yeah. carrier, they're specifically designed to do a specific task. So 
what they're looking at, they may not be actually picking up the right correctly yeah. what they're seeing because they're using the wrong technology. Right. And they're using, uh, these days they're using, apparently, it's all infrared that they've been catching most Right, they've been the, using a lot of infrared. Yeah. And some radio frequencies radio as well. Radio frequencies too. They've been picking that up as well. So that says that it's something physical. There is something physical there. Something is generating this heat or cold and something is generating these radio frequencies. Right. And if any of you are a scientist out there and you have any ideas, oh, please, you yes. know, please, please leave a comment. So we don't know if any of these UAPs demonstrate some breakthrough technology by us or by some other... Adversaries? Yeah, adversary. <laughs> right, right, right. But like I said before, if it's either one, they're not going to let us know. No. So one thing, though, about the sensors picking up this data, right? they have developed certain patterns, okay? Because of okay. The, they have. Right. Even though their, their uh, database is very small, mm -hmm. they've already developed several patterns as far as the size, the relative size of these things, the oh, okay. shape and the structure. Okay. And yeah. how they move through transmedium right like that fast corner 90 degrees uh, right and going through water without water. S without slowing down and coming out and going the right. same speed to come back to those sightings uap sightings they've been seen clustering around different areas that are government owned right, right? i think your question is why Yes. I mean, if it's not another nation or uh, our own government, how would they know this is, you know, that spot here, they're doing this right now and not over there like last week or, right. you know. It's so there. if it is an adversary, maybe they know. Right. That but, would make more sense. But have you ever thought about this? That the data we're collecting is only from the government that's in specific areas. Right. What about those other areas of the of the yeah. U.S. that doesn't have a military presence, are there those things happening there and we're just not picking them up right, because, because there's not enough we don't to... have the sensors to pick those right. up? So that could be one reason yeah. that it's only around the military. Now the interesting thing is a handful of these UAP in the report demonstrate advanced technology. I think it means what we were talking about before, that, that they're able to you know, accelerate right. from zero to 15, who knows what. miles an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's only and, observable. And, yeah. and make a right-hand turn at that speed. At that speed. Where UAP is locked on, but it takes off at such a rate that the the sensor cannot remain locked on cannot keep that track UAP. Of it, yeah. Very high speed. Very high speed. So it's amazing to me. I mean, so some UAP appear to remain stationary, like we said, you know, in winds aloft, uh, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed uh, without discernible means of propulsion. That, and that's the thing. We don't see any propulsion. Right. We don't see any, any exhaust. Flame, we don't see any flame. Any smoke. Even in the infrared. Right. We don't see it. And I, and I also wonder, you know, on these films that we've seen mm -hmm. that have been released you know were they able to visually see these objects and did they take any video of them without the infrared you know what i'm saying did, all, they, did all they do the, both well all the videos i've seen they the i'm talking about the tic tacs especially they said they weren't showing up anywhere else but the the on the infrared an infrared right I wonder if they if they tried ultraviolet or any other yeah if it, whatever they have. Some of these um, UAP they accelerated at a speed that was well beyond anything like they could never be possible. Possible, yeah. That you only see in movies in Hollywood movies. Exactly. So if they did rigorous analysis by multiple teams or groups. They might be able and use technical experts 
to determine the nature and validity of this data, we might be able to get somewhere. Right. We are conducting further analysis to determine if breakthrough technology were demonstrated. I, I don't even think you need to do any more analysis. Yes. Yes. There is breakthrough technology. For Whose sure. it is? We don't know. Is it from there or is it from here? But isn't that great though, in a way, no matter who it is, we know it's possible. It's pretty awesome. As we were saying before, that the other category out of the five categories that they break down the UAPs into, that most of it is due to a lack of data, or we may require additional scientific knowledge to successfully collect on analyze and characterize some of them. So like we were saying before, we might not have the technology presently to be able to determine what these are. Right. The task force, they want to focus additional analysis on the small number of cases where UAP appeared to display unusual flight characteristics or extreme speeds and maneuvers. Can you imagine if one of these things was going Mach 20 and it hit an aircraft. Like a bullet, oh like faster God. than a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Would they even be able to maneuver to get out of the way of this aircraft to not hit them? Or since they can move through air, water, and create that field of whatever it is, would they go through the plane? Yeah, the... That's, a, that's a possibility right? I never thought of. Right? We can't rule anything out. No, we can't because you know. we don't know about it. The only way to really study this subject is to look at it from every angle. angle. As stupid as it might sound. Take every stupid idea, throw them all in there, yeah. and just as you collect the data, you'll be able to, to oh, eliminate. no, it's not this, it's not that, right. it's not this. We're, we're technologically advanced enough to understand, understand. not how it works, but yeah. that there could be other right. people out there. I mean, wow. we're, we're going into space now. Right. So we're at the technological age of being able to understand that other people might be able to do the same thing. Exactly. And if they're 50 years ahead of us, 100 years ahead, 1,000, a million, who knows? Right. Look yeah. how fast Bro our technology... Well, it's uh, exponential. Exponential. Right. By what? the second. By the second. So, it used to take hundreds of years, thousands of years. Now it's just, you come up with a technology, it's, it's already oh, out obsolete. of date. Yeah, it's, it's obsolete. obsolete. One of the concerns about UAPs is that because they're seen over these military installations where there's training or where there's uh, military flights, activity. Yeah. sometimes those pilots had to land because of oh. the activity or the training had to stop oh, because, because it dangerous. was interrupted. You know, what yeah. if it is a foreign adversary? You don't want them to know to what know you're what doing. You, yeah. Right. So the task force has 11 reports of documented instances in which pilots reported near misses with the UAP, right. which means they almost got hit or it was awfully close. They almost hit them. Well, we currently lack the data to indicate any UAP are part of a foreign collection program or indicative of a major technological advancement by a potential adversary. But that doesn't mean that it isn't those things. Yeah. So we're going to continue to monitor the evidence of these programs given the counterintelligence challenge that they would pose. Right. You know, uh, especially if the UAP have, since they've been detected near military installations and aircraft carrying U.S. government's most advanced sensor systems. Right. So do they have a, a solution or something they, they plan to do or to study or to... They plan to focus on employing artificial intelligence and machine learning okay. algorithms Great. to better understand if there are patterns that we right. don't recognize. So as they collect more of this information, yeah, you know, right. the natural <clears throat> explanations, right. you know, then they'll be able to weed those out, exactly. you know, from the reports like we were saying before. But one thing they do need to develop is an interagency analytical and processing workflow. Right. 
so that they can collect from everyone and and put all this data together use this machine learning these algorithms to figure out what's really going on here so they're currently working with um, on getting additional reporting from okay. not only the Air Force but also the FAA and and as it was said earlier in the report that the Air Force had sightings that were included in this report their period of sightings only was within the last six months so it didn't go all the way back to 2004 right it was, it was only within the last back. six months their program is new right okay so they don't have a lot to report the interesting thing is what prior to the report you know everyone's thinking alien 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 yeah. which it could be I'm not saying for those of you who believe it I'm not saying it's not I'm saying, but there is a possibility that it's ours. Right. We, you know, we can't. We're just like we said before. Every stupid idea has to be in this right. in we, this hat. Us as the public, we don't have all of this data that we can look at for ourselves right. and make our own decision. We're only going off of what we see. And some of these photographs that we see, some of these videotapes that we see. We don't know the full context. If of, they're real or not, yeah. Of, you know, yes, okay, a military pilot took this picture. Did he know it was a balloon? You don't know that. You was just it, see, was it Photoshop? hey, was it, he took a picture of, a, of something, you know, and exactly. you don't know who the pilot is, what the real story behind it is, the photo leaked out. Right. You know, it could be a, a real, uh, you know, something from outer space. We, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. But we don't know the backstory to, to some of this data. Or like I say, it could be us in the future coming back through time travel. It could be. Because if you can... But would you want to come back? <laughs> well, no. Maybe they came back for resources. So yeah. the FAA has a lot of... Uh, they collect a lot of data. Yes. You know, about in, in near misses, uh, sightings by pilots. Or, but, even, but even those pilots, you know... They're afraid to talk oh, about they are, they things. They are, they are, because either you're in the army, flying in the army, or you're flying for an airline company, and it's the same. They, they, those airline companies don't want like to some do. They don't want that publicity. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't want people to think, oh, you don't want to fly that airline because their pilots are all crazy. So they're looking at new ways to increase the collection of UAP, especially over the areas where there seem to be clusters of these things. Right, like you were saying before. Right, so that they can come up with some standard baseline. Right. You know, because you need a baseline to figure out where you're going from there. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things they're thinking about doing is, as I said before, using these algorithms, computer learning, to take a look at old radar all oh, the old data, the, the old, data, the that old you see. data that they still have on record, right? Oh, so that they smart. can and compare it with the new data and see if there's any mm -hmm. similarities, differences, you know, whatever. And they plan to also work together, oh, gather, yeah. <laughs> gather information, gather information, so that they um, can make a determination and plans for. The military and also the intelligence community right. and i think that's what the report is doing i think it's really uh to demand for new budget and you could be right they may I be mean, put it they could be asking money for this when it's already their technology and they're going hey we're going to use this to yeah, build yeah, a better yeah. one well we knew like years ago that so many billions of dollars bit were missing from the panic on budget trillions, trillions. yeah sorry trillions. trillions so this was very interesting very informative I just hope, like you said at the beginning, that there's going to be a follow-up. Uh, there there has another, to be. There has to be. They can't just open a can and just say, hey, that's it. No. The, um, the Pandora's box is open right. now. And I'm sure after seeing, you know, after the Intelligence Senate Intelligence Committee saw this, right. they're going to want more information. Right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Inside, Inside the Skiff. Skiff.